Lord, we are here on the ground. This is the Cubes on the ground program at Centrify's headquarters. We have Cricket Lou, Chief DNS Officer at Infoblox, been with the company from the beginning. Great to see you again. Wrote the book on DNS. What year was that? I mean, DNS was like when I was born. Yeah, 1992. <laughs> September 1992 is when it was published. Great to see you. We've done some podcasts together over the yeah, years. Yeah, good to see you too. DNS now, obviously global. ICANN is now global. It's part of the UN, all different governance bodies, but it's certainly still critical infrastructure. Yeah, absolutely. And critical infrastructure is now a big conversation as the security paradigm has moved from you know cloud to from data center to the cloud. There's no perimeter anymore. Yeah, yeah. How is that changing the DNS game? Well, I think that folks are starting to realize how critical DNS is. In October of last year, we had that huge DDoS attack against Dyn, the big DNS hosting provider in uh, New Hampshire. And I think that woke a lot of folks up. A lot of folks realized, holy cow, um, these guys are, are not too big to fail, as they say, uh, even though they have enormous infrastructure widely distributed around the globe. They have such a concentration of power that um, a huge number of really, really popular web properties were inaccessible for, for quite some time. So I think that caused a lot of people to look at their own DNS infrastructure and to reevaluate it and say, wow, maybe I need to do something. Interesting about the stack wars that are going on in the tech industry you, we've lived through and you've been part of it as a te chief technical officer in many companies. DNS was always that part where you had to be secure, but now you have blockchain, you have new kinds of infrastructure mm -hmm. with mobile computing. Now we're 10 years post I iPhone. Yep, the critical moment. How has infrastructure changed uh, beyond DNS because it still needs to work together? Yeah, well it's funny because we do have all of these new types of devices, um, we do have new technologies, but a lot of things have remained the same. DNS is still the <laughs> same. Uh, the remarkable thing is that, that the latest version of my book is still is 10 years old, actually 11 years old yeah. now, so it's older than the iPhone, and people still buy it because the underlying theory is is still yeah. the same. It, it it hasn't changed. It's a, a testament, really, to the quality of the original design of DNS uh, that it, it still works for anything, and that it's scaled to serve a network as as diverse and as large as as the internet is today. What's your biggest observation looking back over the past decade with DNS? By the emergence of virtual machines, now cloud. Again, the game is still the same because DNS is the plumbing and provides a lot of the the key critical infrastructure for the web and now mobile, um, what's the big ob observation that you've seen over the decade? Well, I'd say one of the things that's happened over the last several years that's, that's maybe the, the most important development in DNS is uh, something that we call response policy zones. Up until now, DNS servers have just been sort of blithely complicit when it comes to, uh, for example, malware. A malware wakes up uh, on a device and it assumes that it has DNS available to it. And it uses DNS, for example, to find a command and control server, maybe a drop server to exfiltrate data to. Um, and the DNS server, even though it's being asked to look up the address record for yeah. command and control server.malware.org, it just happily goes along with it. Uh, a few years ago, Paul Vixie, who I've known for a very long time, came up with this idea uh, called Response Policy Zones, which is basically to imbue our DNS servers with resolution policy so that you can tell them, hey, if you get a query for a domain name that we know is being used maliciously, don't answer it. Don't resolve it like you normally do. Instead, hand back a little white lie like that doesn't exist. And moreover, log the fact that somebody looked it up because it's a good indication that they're infected. So bringing policy to DNS is really taking and making it more intelligent. Yeah, that's right. And certainly as networks grow, I was just watching some of my friends that setting up the, the wireless at, at Burning Man. And the whole mm -hmm. new change of, of how the Wi-Fi is being deployed and how networks are being constructed is really coming down to some of the basic principles of DNS to route more, <laughs> be responsive. And this is, this is kind of a new change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's, there's a, a lot going on in, in sort of changes to, to the deployment of DNS. It used to be that most yeah. big companies ran all their own DNS infrastructure. At this point, I think most large companies don't bother running, for example, their external, what we'd call their external authoritative DNS infrastructure. They give that to a big hosting provider to, to do. Somebody like Dyn or VeriSign or uh, Newstar or somebody like that. So that's a big change. Cricket, I want to ask you about the Cyber Connect event going on in New York. Um, mm -hmm. Infoblox is involved. Uh, security is, is paramount. Now, an industry event, Centrify is the main uh, sponsor. You guys are involved as a vendor, but it's not a vendor event. It's an industry right. event. Um, it's a broad category. 
What's your thoughts on how this kind of industry event? Usually, events have been like black hat or you know vendor events, putting pushing their wares and, and selling their stuff. But now security is global. What's yeah. your take on this event? Well, uh, I'm hoping to be able to spend a little bit of time talking to folks who come to the event about DNS and how it can be used as a tool in their sort of security tool chain. Um, the folks who come to us as Infoblox to, to our events already know about DNS. They're already network administrators um, or they're responsible for DNS or something like that. My hope is that we can reach a broader audience through CyberConnect and actually talk to folks who maybe haven't considered uh, DNS as a security tool, who maybe haven't thought about um, the necessity to, to bolster their DNS infrastructure. One final question since we're on bonus material time, I've got to ask you about uh, the global landscape, I mean, in my early days involved in the DNS when I came was formed in 98 uh, through the 2000 time frame. You know, international domain names were Unicode, that's not ASCII, so that technically wasn't DNS, but still they were keywords. You had this global landscape in, say, China that actually wasn't DNS, so there's all these abstraction layers. Has anything actually evolved out of that trend of really kind of bringing an abstraction layer on top of DNS, and certainly now with the nation states with security, mm -hmm. our, our issues, China, Russia, et cetera. How has all that played out? Well, uh, international domain names have actually taken off in some, in some areas. Uh, and basically, it's, it's, it's as you say, you have the ability now to use Unicode labels and domain names in certain contexts. For example, if uh, you're using your web browser, you can yeah. type in a uh, Unicode domain name, and then what the, the web browser does is it translates it into an Resolve equivalent, it. yeah, equivalent yeah. Uh, uh, ASCII representation, and then and then resolves it using DNS, which is uh, the traditional DNS that doesn't actually know about Unicode. There are actually some very interesting security implications to using Unicode. For example, people can register things that have uh, Unicode, we would say, glyphs in them that look exactly like regular ASCII characters. For example, um, you could you could register uh, PayPal.com where the A's are actually lowercase a's in Cyrillic, which is not the same code point yeah. as an, yeah. an ASCII A. So it's great, visually- Great for hackers. Oh yeah, <laughs> visually indistinguishable yeah. from PayPal.com in a lot of contexts, yeah. and people might click on it and go to a page that so looks like PayPal. it's a like phishing PayPal's. dream, yeah, big time. Yeah, yeah, really, really dangerous, potentially. And so we're, we're working out some of the implications of that, trying to figure out within, yeah. for example, web browsers, how do we protect the user from, from things like yeah. this? And a lot of SSL out there, now you're seeing HTTPS everywhere. Is that now yeah. the norm? Yeah, actually, within uh, the Internet Engineering Task Force, the IETF, uh, after, um, it became obvious that state-sponsored um, uh, eavesdropping <laughs> was was kind of <laughs> the, find the, the right norm. Word. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the IETF embarked on uh, an effort called Deprive, uh, and Deprive is basically um, uh, a bunch of individual tracks to encrypt basically every single part of the DNS channel, especially that between what we call the stub resolver and the recursive DNS server. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that if you're um, a customer here in the United States and a subscriber to uh, an ISP like Comcast or, or whomever, you can make sure that, that that first hop between your computer and the ISP is, is secured. We're getting down and dirty under the hood with Cricket Lou on DNS. I got to ask, kind of up level to the consumer. I mean, one of the things that kind of pisses me off the most when I'm surfing the web is, you, you see the browser doesn't resolve, um, or you go hit someone's website. Oh yeah, it's something .io. These new domain names, top level G GTLDs are out there. Dot .media, all these, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and companies have firewalls or whatever their equipment is, and it doesn't let it through because they're trying to protect the perimeter still must be. I mean, what, is this, what does that mean when, when companies aren't letting those URLs in? Is it a firewall issue or is it more they're still perimeter based, they're not resolving it, they're afraid of malware, some things aren't resolving <laughs> in? What, yeah. what does that mean? Well, I think as often as not, it's an operational problem. It's on the it could company. be yeah, it could be uh, uh, just a misconfiguration mm -hmm. on the part of the folks who are hoping, uh, uh, hosting the the uh, target websites yeah. DNS. It could be that. I, I don't know a lot of of folks. So one of policies or something is kind of locking down. Could be that certain. too, or it could be, for example, that um, they have a proxy server and they're trying to limit access to the internet by category. Yeah. Maybe it does it does. Uh, categorization and filtering by by, Can you by work category on that? content. <laughs> <laughs> Can you write some code for that? Well, thanks. Great to see you. Thanks for sharing uh, this conversation here on the ground, Centrify, and good You're luck welcome. with the, the CyberConnect conference. Yeah, Appreciate nice it. to see you too. All right, I'm John Furrier with On the Ground here on the Cube at Centrify's headquarters in Silicon Valley. Thanks for watching.